For a while now, I've had the mindset that adventure is the respectful pursuit of trouble. However, with a few more miles under me, I also think that at its deepest level, adventure is the pursuit of oneself. Adventure has a way of introducing yourself to yourself. Hopefully you like who you meet. If you don't, then the start of an adventure is the perfect time to put yourself in check. A fortunate man will get to do this with his friends, locked arms and driven, to pursue what is beyond, ever reaching for the greatest reward of all, to become a team. Today, we find ourselves in a place beyond our wildest dreams, at the cusp of completing an adventure that in the beginning seemed unobtainium. But hard work pays, and with a little luck, we might just get to check the box on our bucket list dream, the Pan American Highway. This thing called Expedition Overland and the dream to take on the Pan American started with a decision seven years ago. The decision was to go, to take on what we could and then little by little, take on more. Eventually, we weren't taking steps anymore. We were making leaps. Over the years, XO has had the fortune of working together with friends as we set out to tackle the Pan American Highway in stages. First was Alaska and the Yukon, then Central America, and now the continent of South America. Through this seven-year process, some have had career changes, others have had kids. A few of us have started companies and others advanced in their careers. Normal life stuff. But a few of us work full-time at Expedition Overland, like my wife Rochelle and I. Jeff, Nate, and Heather have come on as well pouring passion and talent into the dream to keep it alive. And South America is certain to be the greatest adventure of them all. Our transport during this extended journey is our fleet of overland vehicles. Our Toyota Tacoma, codenamed X3, will lead the convoy. It's outfitted with CBI armor, a worn winch, max tracks, icon suspension and wheels, easy on racks, and alley boxes for storage, and a habitat camper system for interior living space. X3 is followed by our new 200 series Land Cruiser, Samson, and it's equally equipped on the outside with an additional goose gear organization system inside. Samson is towing the X Venture XV3 trailer and is paired with our Easy On rooftop tent. The tail rig will be our returning 5th gen 4Runner Rufio. Our Grabber X3 tires are the official tire of the expedition, and we have tasked them to take us 14,000 miles to the southern end of the fourth largest continent, South America. The continent is a massive undertaking, and thorough planning is crucial to execute the miles inside a timeline that everyone can do. Planning for the South America expedition started over a year ago with the bulk of the planning six months ahead of our departure. It starts with everyone throwing out what they would like to see and do. Then, priorities are made to accommodate the time frame. Eventually, the route takes shape and in-country contacts are established to help us with locations. Kurt will head up the navigation again this year. He possesses a skill set that's mission critical. Kurt and I work heavily together to accomplish the series and the expedition, balancing travel with filming, sometimes on an hourly basis. Truck builds and modifications begin four months from departure. Jeff heads this up and will continue to maintain the vehicles throughout the expedition. Next, the crew is finalized. Nathan Norby, who is an editor and shooter for us, joins us this season. A true overlander, Nate has been known to hop on a motorcycle and go north to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska on a whim. Next, my friend Eric Olson. 
Eric and I went to the same high school, but became friends in college. We have worked together on all kinds of film projects over the years. He just moved back to town, and this expedition is his first time running camera in almost a decade. Joining the team for the first time is Heather. She will be the photographer and in charge of meals for this trip. In addition, she's the lead on shipping, ensuring the trucks make it to South America and back. No small task, to say the least. My wife, Rochelle, will be traveling with us during the first smaller segment of the expedition, Colombia to Peru. She's been busy chasing her own dreams the last few years with her XLs project. Just recently, she was one of the first daring women to compete in America's first all-women's navigation rally raid, known as the Rebel Rally. Returning member Ty Heaps will also be with us from Colombia down to Lima, Peru. He's had a part of every major expedition to date. Now a former Marine, Ty is in charge of our security. He's 100% all the time, and you breathe a little easier knowing he's got your back. With all the gear on the ground, final installs are completed. Rooftop tents, battery systems, galley equipment, and truck loadouts are completed during this time. Everything has been thought through to the greatest detail. Because of this, the trucks have never been lighter or more properly equipped. Our goal this season was to have the lightest, the strongest, and the most efficient systems possible. On our way to ship the trucks to Colombia, we send them through a shakedown. And these are no ordinary trucks. X3 is the lead in the convoy. It carries a driver and the navigator. It's also the lead communications truck. It's equipped with radios for convoy communications, a satellite phone, cell data booster, and a GPS tracking device. It also contains Odyssey batteries built to charge 75% of the production equipment power needs. Samson is our crew and personal bags hauler. It's by far the most comfortable vehicle to travel in. It's outfitted to be as self-sustained on its own, if need be. With its big V8 engine and towing power, it's been assigned to tow the XV3 trailer that holds a 21-gallon water tank, our tools, trash can, and chairs, as well as additional jerry cans for long-range stints of the expedition. Rufio has the best view to the rear and is in charge of managing the movement of the convoy. Rufio is equipped with a very large Odyssey battery that facilitates the remaining 25% of charging needs for production equipment and functions as the computer and hard drive center. It also carries the secondary refrigerator and dry food storage for the galley. This is a dynamite dream come true convoy and they're ready to take us on the biggest adventure to date. Expedition Overland is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in part by Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Magpul. Hard goods and apparel. Warn. Go prepared. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Equipped Expedition Outfitters. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Xventure Trailers and in association with Toyota. Let's go places. With the truck's shakedown complete, 
Jeff, Nate, and I head to Galveston, Texas to get our trucks on a boat to Columbia. We have been temporarily shut down due to tornado activity in the southern end of Tornado Alley. We're going right through the middle of that to get to Wichita, Texas. Wichita Falls, Texas. We're like storm chasers. We're totally like storm chasers. <laughs> totally like storm chasers. Uh, I just don't know where Helen Hunt is in her yellow Jeep mansion. I think if we chill here for 45 minutes or so, yeah, this will blow on by and we'll get on through. It appears the adventure has already begun. It has, yes. We decide to play it safe and stop for the night before heading to our final shipping destination of Galveston, Texas. Top priority now is getting the trucks locked down for shipping. The trucks are 100% ready to get on a boat yeah. by now. Hope you're ready. All right, here we go. God, this is crazy. I can't believe we're gonna have our vehicles out of our control here for a little bit. I'm sure everything's gonna be intact when we get to them, but this is weird. Copy that. This is looking awesome. Is that our ship? Right there, Mike. Let me know. Shipping the trucks to Cartagena, Colombia will take two weeks. This allows us to return home and focus on developing new skills before our long expedition. Back in Bozeman, we team up with my friend Chris Forrest of Tactic to gain new skills and develop our teamwork. For several days, we work through soft skills, fighting skills, violence prevention, etc. Really, the whole point of this class is to teach folks uh, to feel confidence under high stress. Mm -hmm. So more than even fighting with a knife, uh, it's defending against a high stress situation. And we're going to learn uh, the MAD principle, having the right mindset, having uh, awareness, and creating distance, which is going to enable you to prevail in a situation like that. In addition to these skills, we develop our convoy tactics, including communication of convoy commands, we practice down driver drills, and overall situational awareness when traveling by vehicle. When you get there, it shortens your turning radius when you go the next direction. Getting off. And you're, you're, you're running the pedals from here. We are going to completely foreign places, some with less than favorable reputations. We consider this a major part of being self sustained and prepared. <laughs> Ten days later, we board another plane to meet our trucks in Cartagena, Colombia. As the fourth largest country on the South American continent and one of the most populous, Colombia is a rich country. Rich in not only resources like oil, gold, silver, copper, emeralds, and coal, but history, culture, and its people. It's a country plagued with years of devastation and corruption. The Medellin cartel 
led by Pablo Escobar, has long polluted its reputation as dangerous and drug-infested. However, we know there's more, and we're here to find out what else this country offers. Unsure of what we will encounter in Colombia, we are here to find out the true reality of the country, to explore its regions, meet its people, and be impacted by its culture. We are here to overland. But first, we need to get our trucks into the country. It is 9-13, day one of the South America expedition. We're in Colombia, and we're working on the process of getting our trucks out of the port. We've hired a guy, his name is Sander, and he, he's awesome, he's been doing a great job. And he's, he's working through the process of the paperwork, going through Aduana, which is customs. And uh, I think if everything goes right, we'll, we'll get our trucks by this, this afternoon. So, but uh, we have found a couple things. Um, an oil problem has occurred on Rufio. We think that one of the plugs, perhaps a plug or an oil filter was not put on just right. That's just all part of the travel. It's day one, here we go, we're kicking it off. So, we'll see how today sorts out. Importing vehicles is different for every country, but in our limited experience, we are finding that it is very convoluted and a frustrating process. To be fair, there is a thousand other vehicles leaving the port, and your vehicle is simply just a number. As soon as um, somebody there says a higher up in the, in the ranks at the customs oh, office, right. when she signs off, go to the port and pick up the vehicle. Oh, nice. okay. We budgeted three days to get out of port, and it looks like we will need every second of them. Having the extra days is allowing us enough time to get a bag that the airline misplaced. It's a crucial bag with mission critical gear and paperwork. No, we already have a copy. We just need to find their office to oh, see. Yeah. Okay, but you Thank found you. the bag. You know where it's at. Woohoo! That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, what's good news? That's good. Cool. Bag is in route. It's, it'll be here this evening. They're actually going to send it straight to the hotel. So that's a super crucial bag. It's got a lot of crucial parts in it. <laughs> the following day, we get orders to report to the port office by 8 a.m. We battle traffic for three hours to reach our appointment. Sander gets a troubling call. Yeah, pero mira, 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 un momento. Acabamos de nosotros de pedir una hora y media en transporte por un paro de profesores. Con Adriana fue muy claro ayer. There has been a mix-up with the paperwork. It's on their end, and they don't have what we need. It could cost us an entire day of travel, putting the expedition behind schedule, if not resolved. So what did she say? I don't know. She said she's going to call her, and she says she's going to see if there's a, a way that, um, that it can be fixed. And, I mean, I'm already thinking what could be a solution. Um, I could call my agent, the shipping agent that I normally work with, and say, look, explain the, 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 the problem and say, look, is anybody from you that can, you know, I mean, they have motorcycles, uh, that can pick up the papers with, from Adriana and bring them up to uh, Puerto. And of course, that will have a cost. Sure. But hey, you know, uh, th th that's better than us going back and, uh, and on a motorcycle, you know, the traffic jam is not a, no, exactly. So that is my plan B, but I'm not going to tell her that I have already a, right. an idea. Because then they're not going to then that'll be exactly the idea. they're not going to be you know motivated to to solve it themselves. Uh, so how far to the port from here? It's uh, about five to ten minutes. It's right here. We're there. Yeah, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't, if they're not willing to 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 help out, I'm going to get somebody on a motorcycle and get those papers over here. Yeah. We decide to gamble on the paperwork and head to the port without it. Through a series of respectful conversations, we gain access to our trucks. The port has denied us our main cameras, 
but did permit us to use our cell phones. Well, what did they do to it? Nothing. Anything looks good? Looks good. It's all there. Thankfully, our oil leak is proving to be a non-issue. I, I think it is simple. I think it's going to be a simple fix. Um, it'll be nice to get it over with. It's been on my mind for 24 hours now. So yeah. We can get it fixed and get it rolling. All right, so the trucks are just coming out of the border. Rolling into Columbia on our own now. It is out of the port. She's all ours. So, good job, mate. One left. I already have uh, X3 is out. Now we have Samson. And Jeff is out there with the final one. So that's our final truck getting through. Man, that's awesome. So, I think we're ready to roll. All right, here we go. This is so exciting. All right, let's go meet the gang. Back at the hotel, the other crew is securing the equipment and awaiting our arrival. Including the lost bag with all its essential gear, which just arrived. This is Nate's first time in another country, and in 24 hours he has flown into an international airport, walked around international cities, imported a car into another country, and now just drove in convoy, tight convoy, through crazy streets. I mean, that's as gnarly as it gets back in there. And uh, he did a great job. I think he's integrating well. So Now we just gotta get these trucks packed up, get out of the hotel and get on the road because we got a campsite tonight by hopefully in two hours, so vamanos. Before Sander heads out, we have him sign our new expedition flag. <laughs> it goes without saying that Sanders is a godsend. He has been absolutely critical in our expedition. Absolutely. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sander. You're very welcome. Yeah. And have fun, have a great trip. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sander, if you're out there watching, I can't thank you enough for your generous help. And so I, my argument is we just load everything as quick and dirty as we can here, get food in fridges, perishables in there. Let's get there while we got some daylight because we'll have maybe an hour. And then let's blow everything back out of camp and do a, a hard reset. Sounds good. We can open tents, put sleeping bags in tents, like nice. start getting stuff where they go rather than just shuffling them to be shuffled. Everyone good on that? Sounds yeah. awesome. Capitan, you good on that? Let's row. With a couple hours to camp, we finally have a little time to rough settle in. Around here. Yeah, there is. Rough as they come. We are straight on this one for a couple miles, guys. So just settle in and enjoy the scenery. It didn't take long before the cops caught up to us. Then we were pulled over. <laughs> so we'll get pulled over probably 30 more times. <laughs> we're rolling, thank you. Eventually they just like, once they find some sort of evidence that you kind of got your stuff together, they let you go. They just kick you out. So, good job. It 
It's night one oh of the South America expedition out in camp. We've had a couple nights in a hotel, but tonight's our first night getting out of Cartagena and getting on the road. And it's always a like a surreal moment because you've worked for so long to be able to get here right now. So we, we've always said that like, as soon as we get those trucks in country and we get them signed off, that's a major win. That means that the expedition can actually happen. And we're just going through the normal systems of a first night camping as a team. Like everybody goes through the same stuff. It, where's my sleeping bag go? Where does, you know, who's cooking? All that kind of stuff, that's pretty normal. We'll start working through those systems and within a few days we'll be a, a lean mean machine at camp and this will be set up in minutes and people will be able to be in bed in minutes if need be so yeah it's exciting stuff to be able to be in Colombia with your trucks so here we go back to work. The team is already coming together, and for a first night in another country, I'd say everything is going pretty well. Everyone is finding their place. I am just now getting time to mount our diff breather manifold. So. I got most of it plumbed before our trip, but I didn't have time, like the two minutes it takes to put this thing on the firewall. So here we are, day one, doing this. This morning I'm doing my no morning chores, and uh, that's that's logging everything that's happened. Like uh, I write down, I just kind of journal. This is the best way to put it. I put our coordinates down, and the coordinates today are pretty interesting. Our northern latitude is 10 degrees, 20 minutes, 30 seconds, 10, 20, 30, which is pretty cool. So that latitude is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right now we're at 10, but it's gonna be zero when we get to the equator. So that's pretty cool to see as well. So I got my map and I track my progress on that and uh, write it down and that's what I do every morning and I'm sitting in the Land Cruiser because I can turn the cooled seats on and I sit here with a fan on me. No one else knows that. That's why I'm in here. Except for me. Except for the cameraman now, Nate. So, I'm about to pack up and leave. It's a solid two-day push to get into the center of the country, where we are planning on meeting up with our Colombian contact, Federico. We're meeting up with a gentleman named Federico Mascuela, and he is a friend of the program. He sent through, uh, I believe you two, he was a fan of the show and sent us a letter. He said when we're down this way, look him up. What is the plan, Rob? We got like... Two these guys, right? Well, kind of two full days. We're going to meet him today around a little town called Lago Med and head out on the trail with him. Roger, thank you. What was scheduled to be a meetup with a single guy, Federico, ends up being a party of six vehicles full of friends and family. And our man is Federico right here, and this guy is uh, hooking us up. He's been awesome, super generous with his time, and he's they're gonna show us around. So we're gonna do some railroad tracks today and some other exciting stuff. So we're pumped. Can't wait to get on the trail. <laughs> it's gonna be quite the crew for a couple nights. I think it'll be really good. I think it'll be good for them, good for us. Good little cross-cultural uh, uh, fun four-wheeling through the uh, mountains here and through some of the hills and that. We're, we honestly don't know really what's in store for us, so it's a big kind of question mark ahead of us, and we're putting a lot of trust in, I think it's Frederico. Uh, so, here we go. Awesome group of people. We're going to have a really good time. So, we'll see what kind of trouble we get into. 45 minutes later, we were surrounded by those famous Colombian hills. 
And while we air down, it's very evident that four-wheel culture is alive and well in Colombia. Wheeling here is a family event, just like home. Don't uh, step in that horse goodness right there. Pretty cool that the uh, old bridges are made of the old railroad ties that have been pretty resourceful. The road is taking us past old railroad stations built in Colombia's golden era. This one has been repurposed as the Village Community Center. You said there was a old bridge and we're going to cross up here somewhere? I'm not sure where that's at that we have the opportunity to cross, but there is a bridge. That's funny. I'll ask him. Federico, just to be sure, these are not the the big bridges you were talking about, or is this them? No, no, this is our small one. Awesome, thank you. So I just confirmed with Federico, I was worried that these were the big bridges he's talking about. He said, now these are the small ones. These bridges are what is left of the railroad track that once climbed their way through this dense jungle region, hauling tons and tons of various natural resources throughout Colombia. While made of steel, they creak and groan from years of service. That's insane, huh? One of the most scariest things I've ever driven. There's just 100 foot drops on each side plank was like click clunk click clunk click clunk <sighs> and there's water down below and it's just straight off the edge and I have the trailer I don't want to hug one side or the other because if one tire goes off you're host. This is a very cool place but I think the word of the day is super. So we just crossed two massive bridges that Eric and I both walked over they were like super sketchy but really cool and super high up and this one is now I think like twice as long and like four times as high it's huge and so the guys are each vehicle is going to go over it and we're going to go one at a time super slow but the water down there is super fast and it's like super exhilarating it's, it's pretty cool so we're getting ready to, to cross this super big bridge with a, it's no sides on it it's very sketchy at best it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a little puckering, if you know what I mean. Fear can get the best of you at times, especially in times like this. But it's important to get yourself into a place of reality. If you can do that, you'll have a great time, and most likely, come out with a cool story. But if you want to push your luck, do what this guy does. Stand out there on the edge, remove your hands, and take a selfie. Darwin Award, here we come. That was a really high, long, scary bridge. How'd you feel, babe? He said, I love you before we started. <laughs> he did. He's like, well, I love you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> we push into the night to make our way back to town. The locals advise we not stay in this area overnight, but instead stay at a local four-wheeler's farm. Almost to town, we come across a car, high-centered in the road, on its way to the local bar. A little recovery situation. The car here went off the side just into the ditch. So the guys that we've been four-wheeling with today are getting some ropes out and getting them hooked up. Pulling them out, doing a good deed today. Just made it 
to a little town called La Breja, I believe. Looks like we're gonna go eat at a restaurant called Ran Rancho Loco. Rancho Loco. Uh, this is a really happening town. Let's lock it up and eat. This is like as real and as authentic as it gets. They're just cooking over an open fire. So I'm expecting this to be really good. And it's probably the best way you can finish off a day like today. So let's get in there. One of the best aspects of being a part of the Overland community is that you will have friends anywhere in the world. I don't know what you guys are going to eat. It's a great atmosphere to say the least. Enriched by new friends. <laughs> That's really good. I could eat this every day and be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> we have deer, so I thought it's small. So it's like our deer. This is bueno. Well, this is really good. So it's corn, it's crushed. It's really good. Some of, some of them are. It's like cornbread. Yeah. yeah. Really, really good food. So uh, I'm expecting the same for the rest of the trip. And, yeah, all is well. You gonna sleep there tonight? Oh man, I love hammocks. Sometimes it's cool pulling into places in the middle of the night because you don't know what it's gonna look like in the morning and kind of dream about it all night and then see if you were correct in the morning. I'm just going to throw this out there that Nate loves to film flowers. I have told him over and over that they will never make the show, but he just won't listen. We're in paradise. Good night. Hey guys, today we're gonna go to Canyon El Chicamocha. Uh, you're gonna love the, the, the view. We were gonna go through Barichara, that is an old town, very old town of Colombia. We are also are going to go to Villanueva. We, then we're gonna go inside some mines there in the tunnels. We take the back roads to get to Nueva, up and over the mountains and crossing rivers. At the bottom of a pass, we find a bridge in need of some serious repair. Bridge is falling apart. You can see why they're fixing it. You would never see that in the United States, and they would never let you cross this bridge in the middle of construction. So, so far I'm digging Colombia. Come to find out, the boss is at lunch, so the crew kindly lets us through. It's a big win for us because it would be a huge detour to get around this. Good thing the boss was in there, because we have a long way to go today. Not far up the road, Heather takes a wrong turn and gets a little cultural experience out of the deal. This man is slightly drunk and charismatically lends his hand. I think the takeaway lesson here is don't listen to a drunk man. We all thought it was funny though. And I think the drunk man's cargo did too. Convoy pushes up and over a road called the Via Garan Zapataka. This road eventually reaches pavement and at the ridge, the road sweeps us around a bend, dropping us into the Rio Sagamosa. Spectacular switchbacks lead down to a stunning bridge it warrants a quick stop. Is that uncomfortable? <laughs> We're here in uh, Berichara. We just met up with some more of our local 4x4 guides. They're going to show us around some cool spots tonight. We're going to go up to a mine that we can drive in and then find a nice place to camp. We say adios to a few of our amigos and continue on as a small group now. 
through the town of Barachara. Barachara is a historic town known for its cobbled streets and colonial architecture. It's been preserved over the centuries due to its unique plaster. A special mixture of wood and mud allows it to withstand the frequent seismic activity in the region. Barachara is also known as one of Colombia's most beautiful towns. We are on our way to a mine that is huge, and apparently we are able to drive our trucks around inside. The road is super sketch, especially after dark. One wrong move here and it would be a fatal ride hundreds of feet into the pitch black bottom. I was like, why is it so black over there? I'm like, because there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be best if we don't go over that edge. Guys, that we can go in, so why don't you swap out and take a plan? Copy. Well, let's get out and take a look. That oh. is nuts. Ty and Kurt can go in there. Let's go check it out. Murcielago? A loco Murcielago? Aki! <laughs> Rufio to X3, do you copy? Rufio to Samson? Samson, Rufio. I can't hear X3 either. Okay, we must have just lost them. Well, guess we'll find out what they see. Roger that! 15 minutes later, the guys finally come back. It is huge in there. Just crisscross. Tunnels, tunnels left, like right, like there. think of playing a maze with your vehicle. It's pretty cool. I think it's time to pop on some ridges and head in. The mine extracts a special form of talcum powder. If you have ever had a cast for a broken arm or leg, most likely, it was made from talcum cast powder from this very mine. Oh, Zoinks! We travel throughout this massive mine for almost an hour, seldom crossing the same road twice. I'm really thinking vehicular hide and seek needs oh, to happen yeah. one of these days. Uh, yeah. Yo, Eric. <laughs> I just, just so you know, this is, this is a little awkward. This is my second, so. Oh, oh yeah, you can all watch. <laughs> We're watching Eric do an interview for the first or second time. <laughs> Let's watch. So, Eric. Yes. Yes. How'd it go? Um, some, some people might say, you know, oh, it's, it's just a mine, but. Now, this was a Colombian mine, and with Colombian mines, apparently you can drive your vehicles through them, and, um, and we did just that. It was, it was epic. Good job! <laughs> High five. Yeah! You nailed it! Killed it! You killed it! <laughs> well done. Well done. South America is already proving to be a place beyond anything we have experienced. The roads are incredible, the terrain unforgettable, the mountains beyond fathom. But our journey is just beginning. We are the team of Expedition Overland, a team of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. As always, we invite you to join us on our adventure. 
take notes from our mishaps, laugh at our expense, but above all, we hope that you are inspired to explore your world, wherever you may be. Join us next time for an all-new episode of Expedition Overland. <laughs>